Hello again, I've got a new meter that we're going to be looking at today. This is a Maztec MS8211D. See it comes with a nice little pouch, the probe itself, a manual, and a couple of different probes. One of them has this nice alligator clip. These plug into the back of the meter. This meter costs about $20 US, it's 2,000 counts. You can see the meter is a Cat3 600 volt rated meter. You can see it has a milliamp range and this will read down to a resolution of 10 microamps. It has a maximum input of 200 milliamps and it's got a resettable fuse or a PTC inside instead of a mechanical type fuse. For both the AC current and voltage modes it has a bandwidth of 40 to 200 hertz. It's an averaging meter only. You can see it has no backlight. It's got this interesting mode here for logic. So it's got two LEDs up in the top. One is red and the other one is green. So the green LED is active when the voltage across the meter is between 0 and 1.5 volts and it turns red between 3.5 and 5 volts. We can see how the tip is recessed down inside the body. Unfortunately the mechanism that engages this doesn't feel very well made. I've already functional tested the meter and recorded all the data off of it so I have a baseline. Let's just go ahead and we'll have a look inside. You can see it uses two triple A's. Hmm. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's like they've got the crystal tape down, but there's a that is definitely metallic. I don't know what that is. That's the big glob of solder sitting between the two diodes here. Oh, that's nice. Nice quality. <laughs> Not so sure that wasn't from putting the spring in. I wonder if they don't hand solder that. You can see a lot of flux residue around this area. You know, something like that breaks off in the meter. You know, it starts floating around in there. That's not going to be good. It's hard to believe that's not going to break after a few cycles. The PTC they've got up here measures about 570 ohms. I'll tell you one thing that concerns me right off the bat. We're going to be applying a transient all the way across this entire circuit board. The chances of this surviving, I think, are slim to none just looking at it. You know, normally what you have is the leads coming out of one side of the meter. They're fairly close to each other. Assuming the manufacturer does their job right, we keep that current in a nice closed loop. Some meters like the Unit T181 had a real bad circuit board design. Of course, a meter like this is going to be a lot worse than that. Let's see if we can go ahead and lift this out. Looks like it just is clipped into place with these little side latches here. If we look at the end of the circuit board, it looks like we can add two more LEDs. You can see it's got two additional current limiting resistors. There are no pops. And we can see in the plastic here, it definitely has the recesses to support the extra LEDs. I could tell you when I played around with the feature, those LEDs are quite dim. I don't know what that is, but that, it looks like a little piece of wire that was stuck in that tape. You can see I can bend it. You know, I wonder if this isn't the lead right off of the crystal. It looks to be about the right diameter. I just wonder if that fell off when they inserted it and somehow got wedged in there. This is just a test board that I made up several years ago. It's got an FPGA and currently it's programmed with a synthesizer and it also has a pseudo random number generator built into it. The only thing that appears the function does in this case is enable the LEDs. So if I release the button, you can see it still reads the DC voltage. You can imagine trying to troubleshoot some modern hardware with something like this. 
you're not going to get very far. You see I've changed out the probe on the Maztec and I've gone ahead and installed this small banana to BNC adapter. Okay, so currently all three meters are tied together in parallel and I'm applying a 100 hertz sine wave. This is at roughly one volt. You can see all three meters are reading roughly the same value. Again, if you watch my videos, you know that I've damaged this UT90A several times. I just recently repaired it. I did not go through and realign it. I'm not too concerned about the alignment right now. What we're going to do is look at the roll-off. So I'm going to increase this frequency and let's just see how this meter behaves. You can see we're roughly at 5 kilohertz right now and the UT90A and the Maztec are very similar. So you can see we're roughly uh, 6.5 kilohertz and this is roughly the 3 dB point for this meter. And again you can see the UT90A and the Maztec are reading roughly the same value. Of course the Bryman, a lot higher end meter, uh, still reads roughly 1 volt. Alright, so you can see I've got the high voltage power supply out. All three meters are attached again in parallel. We'll see how the Maztec compares with the UT90A and the Bryman. Of course the UT90A is a manual ranging meter. So I can take this down to the 200 volt scale. You can see I'm reading roughly 35.8. Again this meter has not been aligned since the last time I damaged it. But fairly accurate. You can see the UT90 has a little bit of a gain error. So again, they rate this for a maximum of 600 volts. You can see we're supplying roughly 630 volts. It's not having any problems with that at all. This is the limit of my power supply. And again, we're reading roughly 982 volts on the Bryman, 977 on the Maztec, 997 or so on the Unity UT90A. So currently I'm outputting a roughly 60 hertz square wave. And this is roughly, you can see, 260 volts or so. And again, these two meters are averaging. They are not true RMS. You can see they're both reading a little hot. Okay, this is currently with a roughly 540 volt square wave, again 60 hertz. And we can see it's roughly uh, 540 volts RMS. It has a DC offset currently of roughly 8.7 volts. We can see the UT90A and the Maztec are both reading roughly 600 volts. It's interesting as we can see the Maztec here is resetting. Oh, right there. So I'm not sure what's going on that's causing it to uh, reset like this. It apparently does not like the high voltage being fed into the input. Let's just see if changing the bias voltage on it has an effect. You can see I'm roughly 250 volts of bias and it's not having an effect on the Maztec. We'll change it the opposite direction. And we can see now it's just erroring out with the negative bias. It seems to recover okay. I'm not really sure what the problem with it is, but again we are running it outside of its rated voltage range. Currently I have all three meters tied together in series and you can see I'm outputting roughly 0.4 milliamps. You can see all three meters are reading roughly the same value. See, I'm outputting roughly 68 milliamps now. Of course, the UT90A is a manual ranging meter. Again, for all this meter has been through, not too bad. All right, so this is very close to 200 milliamps. Unfortunately, you can see with the UT90A, uh, this is an overrange. If we go to the 10 amp scale, we physically have to move the jack over. And there's our... 200 milliamps. So again the Maztec is a 2000 count meter so it's 
probably going to overcurrent here. Let's just turn it up a little bit further. Yep. So you can see as soon as it reaches 2,000 count, it just overranges. But fairly accurate. And again, one of the nice features with this Maztec is again, it does use a PTC in place of a fuse. And the PTC that's in here is roughly 570 ohms. So I'd have a fair amount of burden voltage, but again, at least for me, typically what I'm doing when I'm measuring current is I'm using a clamp or I'm going to be using some type of a shunt. So the burden voltage of the meters really doesn't come into play very often. Next we'll go ahead and perform our static test. You see I'm basically just clipping straight across the meter. Again I'll apply five transients, both positive and negative. Alright, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Start with resistance mode. This is 0.5 ohms, 1 ohm, 50 ohms, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, and 10 meg. So with a short, there's a single diode, and we can see it cannot read two diodes in series. This isn't caused by the static discharge. You can see the original data I collected from the meter. It could not handle two diodes. Again, continuity test. You can see the meter is very slow. No problem in the logic mode. So with our 5 volt reference applied. I'll go ahead and finish checking out the rest of the meter and we'll see if it's okay. Looks like the meter survived the static discharge test just fine. What we'll do next is turn on our transient generator. So again, this is outputting a 220 volt full rectified signal. It's interesting in the current mode, you can see it's essentially shorting out the generator. And there's our 220 volts. You can see it's reading in DC mode. All right, let me go ahead and check it and we'll see if it's okay. All right, so the Maztec checks out just fine. We're going to start with our transient test now. So we're going to start with roughly a thousand volts, 100 microsecond full with half height. You can just see I've inserted this little test probe, and we're just going to be clipping straight across the meter. Then we'll go ahead and reverse the two leads. Again, this will be five transients in each mode. Thousand volts, two ohm source impedance, 100 microsecond full with half height. All right, that's it. I'll go ahead and functional test the meter. Well, unfortunately, that was enough to damage the little Maztec. It was with a 10 meg. It's with a 1 meg. You can see it's reading a little high. This is a 100K. a 10k this is with a 1k notice in the voltage mode uh, this is nothing attached I'll go ahead and short the two inputs and you can see it's reading roughly 17 and a half volts and that's the same in the logic mode does not do it in the AC mode. What I'll do is I'll give this thing a little bit to cool. We'll see if it's possibly the PTC. Alright, so I've gone ahead and let it cool for a little bit. 
Here I have the input shorted and you can see it's reading zero volts. Let's try it in the resistance mode. So again this will be a 100k ohm. So it looks like the PTC just got a little hot. So I think what we'll have to do is just let it cool between runs. So now I'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter looks fine. You can see we are now at roughly one and a half division or 1.5 kV. Okay, I'll let this cool down a little bit and then we'll go ahead and functional test it. Unfortunately, it looks like we actually damaged the meter this time. You can see I've got it in resistance mode and it's reading roughly 39 ohms. This is with an open. You can see we shorted out, it reads 0 ohms. The AC and DC volts works. Uh, same thing with logic level, this all works. The diode mode does not work. See, here's a short. And we open it up, it does not overrange. The current mode works as well. Uh, so it's everything in this function. I believe that we probably damaged the diode in here. So what I've done is I've reprogrammed the generator to put out four and a half thousand volts. And let's just see if this will damage it while reading the AC volt mode. Yeah, so you can see it's breaking down on the inside. Hmm. So there's definitely an issue with it. So currently we're putting out 5 volts, and you can see it's reading nothing now. And again, this is resistance mode, and it's now reading a dead short. This is in continuity mode, and you notice as I short the leads, it doesn't read any sort of resistance. What I'm going to do now is I've got the larger transient generator attached. You can see it's turned on over here. And while the meter is in the current mode, I'm going to supply a half cycle line transient off of that generator. And let's just see how this meter handles this. Because again, this meter does not have a high rupture capacity fuse in it. It just has that PTC. So once the transient fired, the knob shot off the front of this thing. But you can see this is just kind of a real flimsy kind of a clip-in piece. But that hit the other side of the room. I don't know if the camera picked up that noise. What we'll do is let's just go ahead and take this thing apart and we'll see what it looks like. You can see here, but it actually popped out the battery cover. You can see it's actually pushed this one battery right out. I don't see any signs of any damage there though. Just must be from the pressure. You can smell it. You can look at the area right here. Blew our capacitor right apart. Yeah. Let's have a look at the other side of the board. See a little bit of char mark on the rotary switch. Well, there you have it. Again, pretty much what I was expecting. You're applying a transient from one end of this meter to the other. 
So all that voltage has to be handled across the entire length of this instead of a conventional meter. You know, like our Bryman here, we have the two leads of right next to each other. So we can actually have a very tight ground loop in this thing. You basically got to pass that entire transient all the way through this circuit board. A very difficult task. But then you do it on a $20 meter. You can see it, uh, it didn't work out so well for them. So for the few of you that had asked me about running one of these meters, hope this helps answer some of your questions about it. Again, I'd like to take this time to welcome any of you new members. Hope you enjoy the videos that I create. Again, I'm not being paid by anybody to make these videos. I buy these meters out of pocket. And again, I'm not affiliated with any of the manufacturers or the distributors. I run these tests out of my own interest. And I think that's going to be it. So until the next meter... Later.